Hello, my wonderful listener. This is a day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. On this note, I welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice, Voice of Hope. Hope. A-W-R, Ghana. Voice of Hope. Voice of Hope. Welcome to Daylight Magazine. Today's program is presented by Wilhelm Swanika and Abigail in Kansa Mensa. You're looking very cheerful, Wilhelm. What's your secret? By the mercies of God. We thank God for his mercies and blessings. On today's program, we have reflections, a healthy you, and moments of truth. Lord, I want to be a servant, giving all my praise to Join us as we reflect on the lessons of life. Our next segment is Reflections. Hello, lovely listener. Today's devotional is... Go preach the good news. And we trace our reading from the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 1. William Carey, a cobbler who became a preacher, was so thirsty for knowledge that he kept a book open beside him while repairing his shoes. In the process, he became an expert in theology, Hebrew, and Greek. Finally, a church appointed him a lay pastor and then a regular pastor. While attending a conference of ministers, he stood and expressed his burden for a world dying without Christ. After urging the ministers to heed the instruction of Jesus to go into all the world and preach the gospel, he expressed his willingness to go himself. The old chairman said, Sit down, young man. You are a miserable enthusiast. When God wants to convert the heathen, 
He can't do it without your help. Carrie kept agitating. Finally, someone sent him to India and he became the father of modern missions. Despite financial difficulties, his wife's insanity and non-Christian prejudice, Carrie remained firm. After years of working, he finally won a convict. Then others, and yet still others. He translated the Bible and founded a university. His life and ministry illustrate the power of the good news in a receptive heart. As Mark starts to write his gospel, he states, Here begins the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. He concludes his gospel with Jesus' final instruction to his disciples. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, everywhere. Like carrier, those who saturate their lives with the good news about Jesus sense an urgency to go and preach the good news to everyone, everywhere. Immersing ourselves in the good news acts as a stimulus to tell others about Jesus. The news is so good that we can't keep it to ourselves, but we must share Jesus. This message is about kind courtesy of Daniel R. Gilt, and I was your presenter, Kofi Bar Nete. Welcome back. We continue with our programs on Daylight Magazine here at Adventist World Radio Ghana. A-W-R, Ghana. Voice of hope. Is this real? Is this real? Oh, friend, let's help prevent it now. Is this real? Is this real? Oh, let's help to fight it out. Abstain, abstain, be faithful to your partner. Say no, say no to extramarital sex. It's real, it's real, it kills, it kills. It's everyone's business. Oh, be wise, be wise, think twice, think twice. The decision is yours now. It's my business, it's your business, it's everyone's business. Abu, what do you do to keep your body healthy? I try and observe healthy habits like eating well and exercising. To know more, join us for Healthy You. Hello, dear listener. You are welcome once again. Today, I am going to continue my chat with Miss Winnie Benjamin. In case you have forgotten who she is or in case you did not listen to us last time, Miss Benjamin is an international educator. She has years of experience um, as a licensed clinical esthetician, a trichologist, and a holistic health and wellness counselor. And today, I am going to tap all that I need to tap from her concerning holistic health and wellness. Miss Benjamin is also the health minister of Carlos Court Ministries in Jamaica, Queens. And um, I am also your host, Belle Dollar Bill. Miss Benjamin, you're welcome. It's great to continue <laughs> okay. our discussion here. Okay. Um, to start with, what is holistic health? What does it mean? I usually have a smile on my face and say, holy. <laughs> All that which is holy. Mm. Uh, But for me, it is the practice of health through mind, body, and spirit. It has to go together. Many times in health, there is a separation from body being in a physical illness. That's what the practice has always been. And there had not been in the past a relationship with the mind and the spirit in relationship to the way the body works functions. And so holistic health is supposed to bring all three together, that when you're treating an individual, you need to understand 
the realm from the spiritual wellness, mental wellness, and then the physical, because the, the manifestation of illness in the physical first starts with the mental and spiritual. Okay, okay. And um, what about wellness? What constitutes wellness? It is basically having this overall area of practice in that which constitutes wellness. For example, being able to eat well, breathe good air, having sunshine, uh, having a balance, a harmonic relationship between the mind, the relationship with others, relationship even in the area of finance, uh, health, physical and physical fitness, Mm -hmm. and all of those coming together constitute wellness. You know, mind, body, and spirit relationship working together Mm -hmm. for good. Okay. So um, if I understood you correctly, you mean before a person falls sick and is seen, Mm -hmm. it means the person would have been sick first spiritually. Amen. And in the mind as well. Amen. Now, um, one may ask, What about a baby Mm -hmm. who we can see has no mind of his own Mm -hmm. or of its own Mm -hmm. and um, the baby just falls sick? What constitutes that? It's a little touchy in the answer, but I've also been known to tell the truth boldly. Everything that is manifested starts with a thought. Many of us believe that pregnancy is just natural. It just happens. We don't realize that there is a thought that goes into it. And many times when I have women who are getting married and they come to me early in the relationship, preferably a year or so before marriage, I usually tell them, start to prepare, even the groom, start preparing your body, mind, and spirit to be in a harmonious relationship with God. It is imperative because whatever you feed your mind and your spirit is growing in your body. Illness, you're manifesting illness in your body. And so being when you do get pregnant and you have a baby, through the mercy of God, even in the polluted state of one's body, God has brought children out beautifully. Yeah. But once in a while, it's a bit much because you have depleted the body so much of what it's needed for the baby to live on that the baby become a extension of the state of your body. And so, therefore, that tends to happen. That's one way of doing it. Some cultures do believe that even if the baby was born healthy, that evil thoughts grouped together. There are some cultures that truly do believe that and maybe they do practice you know, that sort of, where two or three people getting together and then decide that um, we don't want well for that baby. And so just the thoughts manifesting, that's one option. But in all intents and purposes, it depends on how the baby was growing in the womb, what level of nutrients the child has. And also the thought process that the mother had, even while carrying the child. Was it a harmonious pregnancy? Was there friction, anger, hatred? All of that builds into the DNA of that child. Okay. So in effect, you're saying that um, a mother's um, sick thoughts could affect the health of the unborn child. And even when the child is born... It can manifest. Absolutely. Depends on what's spoken to the child, the environment the child is living in, uh, the nutrients that it's fed physically, even spiritually. Is it subjected to prayer, good wishes all the time? Okay. Dear listener, I hope you are really enjoying our chats. Um, We will go on to talk about certain diseases that people get, like um, diarrhea. We all know that um, you can get diarrhea from, by taking something that your tummy might even be allergic to or also by taking something that has not been uh, prepared under hygienic conditions and um, and maybe uh, contaminated um, food or water. Now, how does this relate to the spirituality of the person as well? Because 
it is by what the person has taken that is what is giving him or her that kind of stomachic or diarrhea or infection. Mm -hmm. And here is the case. Any disease that is manifested physically mm -hmm. has its own spiritual problem to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the link here? Many times I have seen situations where three people could be dining together, mm -hmm. all three eating the exact same food, and yet one will fall short and end up with, quote-unquote, a stomach virus or diarrhea. And it's usually a mystery. Well, what could it be? Could not possibly be the food. And sometimes what it turns out to be is that there is a troubled unrest. There's a nervousness. There is a underlying factor mentally. Maybe that person uh, is angry because bitterness, anger, uh, discomfort, uncertainty, even with self. These things just continue to manifest in the body and it just builds. They're, they're also known as um, negative emotions or negative feelings buried alive. There is a book on the market, I just don't remember the name of the author, that has done a very good job in explaining this process. And so it so happens that when that person takes in that food, maybe there was a microbe in it but added on to what was already manifesting that threshold and the immunity okay. of that stomach drops, and that's what happens to that person. Okay. okay, so in effect, if the person is spiritually healthy mm -hmm. and even healthy in the mind, yes. the person might take something that we all know could cause an infection, mm -hmm. but because of the spiritual wellness, mm -hmm. his or her immunity might be able to withstand. Amen. Okay. That's okay. the importance of okay. having a strong okay. spiritual life. That is good, and uh, I hope it is well noted. Mm -hmm. um, our time is up again, but well, we'll still come back and continue our chats. Okay. Dear listener, in case you just joined us, I've been talking to Miss Winnie Benjamin. She is a holistic health and wellness counselor. We've been talking about what holistic health is and what comprises wellness. And today she has made us know that your spiritual well-being, your mental well-being has an impact on your physical well-being. We will meet once again to talk. Miss Benjamin, thank you so much for coming. It's my pleasure. And I have been your host, Belle Dolabio, saying God richly bless you. Contact us, please write to Adventist World Radio, Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF 595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 233-307-051058. If our lines are busy, don't give up. Just keep on trying. We are expecting your emails, your letters, and your calls. Oh, Lord, I want
sins away. Oh Lord, I want two wings to bear my face. Oh Lord, I want two wings to fan my pride. Oh Lord, I want two wings to fly away so the devil won't do me no Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God endureth it forever. At this moment, let us listen to the word of God on moment of truth. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Calling for you and me. on the portals, he's waiting. You are welcome to Moment of Truth. The topic for discussion this hour is entitled, You are designed for a reason. That is, you are made for a reason. And my memory text is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 138 verses 15 and 16. It reads, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Shall we pray? Father, the hour is come for you to speak to us. You are the word. It is my prayer that you talk to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You were made for a reason or for a purpose. Your parents may not have planned you, but it doesn't mean God did not plan you. He works through our errors and failings and was not surprised by your birth but expected it. Do you know it takes over 20 million sperm to fertilize an egg before a baby can be formed in the womb? And out of the millions of sperms, God chose one, that is you. He sometimes chooses two, three, and so on. It is like a whole nation going to the polls and you are selected or elected as president. It tells me that you are unique. God purposely designed every detail of your body. Yeah, it is true that there may be illegitimate parents. But I also believe that they are no illegitimate children. God knows why he allowed your parents to give birth to you. It does not matter if your parents were good or bad. He knows why he allowed them to give birth to you. The reason is that he knows they possess exactly the right genetic to create the costume, you. He knows they had a DNA God wanted or he wanted to make you. God also described every single detail of your body as I've said already. The color of your skin, race, nationality. God also planned the days of your life, where and when you will be born and die. He also planned where you will be born and where you will live for his purpose. The book of Acts 17 verse 26 tells me that there is nothing arbitrary in life. They are all for a reason or for a purpose. God was thinking of you before he made this word, and you are the reason. The question is, Why did God do all this? I believe he loves you and he has plans for you. He has a purpose for your life. And I'm telling you, before you realize the purpose of your life, you will never find meaning to your life. With clear purpose, men will have a meaningful life. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without a purpose. If we are to know the purpose of our lives, it will concentrate our efforts and energy And what is important, we become effective when we are selective. It is human nature to get distracted by minor issues. But I'm telling you, 
Many of us are like gyroscope. We spin around at a frantic pace, but never going anywhere. Without a clear purpose, we will keep changing directions, jobs, relationships, even churches, and what have you. Thinking that each change will settle the confusion or fill the emptiness in our hearts. You think maybe this time it will be different, but it does not solve your real problem. It is because you lack focus and purpose. The Bible tells me in Ephesians 5.17 that there is nothing quite potent as a focused life, one lived on purpose. Men and women who have made great difference in history were the people who were focused. If we are to know our purpose, it will prepare us for eternity. Let me say, knowing our purpose prepares us for eternity. In our world today, many people spend their lives trying to create a lasting legacy on earth. They want to be remembered when they are dead and gone. But I'm telling you, my dear listener, the ultimate is not what people will say about you when you are dead and gone. But what matter is what God will say about you after your death. Most people fail to realize that achievements are surpassed, records are broken, reputations fade, and tributes are forgotten. I am saying today that this life is a preparation for the next. It's a rehearsal a preschool, and our relationship with the Creator, with our God, will determine where we will spend eternity. The purpose of our life is far greater than our personal fulfillment, our peace of mind, or our happiness. The purpose of our living is far greater than our family, our career, and even our dreams and ambition. It is my prayer that the Lord help us to realize the reason why He made us, the reason why He created us, the purpose he sent us to this earth. May he bless us and may he help us to understand his word and to follow whatever he has given to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listening to Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we've discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF 595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, Send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 233-3070-510-58. If our lines are busy, don't give up. Just keep on trying. We are expecting your emails, your letters, and your calls. Today's program was presented by Abigail in Cancer Mensa. And Wilhelm Swanica. Thank you and God bless you for staying with us. So we come your way once again. Stay blessed. <laughs>